What's up guys, welcome back to Madman Music. This is gonna be the first episode in a small little mini series talking about some of the gear that I take on the road with me with propane and why. So today's episode is gonna be appropriately titled, What's in my Inky Case? Let's get into it. What's up guys and welcome back. I'm really pumped to do this little mini series because you know you guys have been dropping these comments for a little while now saying that you want to know what's happening with my live rig and the things that I take on the road with me. I think this is really cool. It's an interesting topic. I have talked about this gear already in a handful of videos, but I'm not exactly sure if I've explained why I've chosen particular things to serve particular functions while I'm out on the road. So in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about what I keep in my inky case. Now, of course, you know, this is by far the best insurance policy you can buy for your guitars. I've done a video on it. You can see it linked up above, but I love this case. It serves a really great purpose because all the other cases that were on the market at the time when I was shopping for multi-guitar cases, multi-guitar hard shell cases specifically, most of these other brands were either way too expensive for a product that I didn't exactly think was worth the money or just didn't really have the features or the availability that Inky does. Inky wound up teaming up with ESP Guitars some time ago and that really helped push out a bunch of these products all over the place. Most of the ESP artists have them because they make a great deal of sense for touring. They're easy to move around. They're damn near bulletproof, and they serve multiple functions. Not only is it super easy to wheel this thing through the airport when you're traveling, but it's just as easy to wheel it into the club, take off the lid, drop it where it's at, and boom, you got a guitar boat. That, to me, blows my mind. So let's crack this thing open and start talking about some of the stuff that's going on inside. For those of you that are interested in these cases, I have mentioned this in my other video where I'm talking about this case. This thing is really heavy duty, but I still suggest buying something like a simple luggage strap. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link one below. You can buy them at most regular stores that sell luggage stuff. You know, Walmart, I think, even has them. For a couple of bucks, it's just one extra added layer of security to make sure that the lid isn't coming open on this thing. All right. So when we bust this thing open, the first thing that we're gonna see on the inside, of course, guitars. Now, I've done videos for both of these guitars. Inside of this case, I've got my E2 Evertune seven string, which is my baby. This thing is literally one of the best guitars I've probably ever played that fits my style perfectly. And the reason why I chose a guitar like this for propane, for one, is that simple, classic look. For a band that's as classic as propane when it comes to the New York hardcore style, you can't beat a classic vibe. And so that's what I went for. I also like guitars that are pretty simple, that look simple. You know, there may be some, some very complicated technical things happening on this guitar, but for the most part, it sort of serves a purpose to do what it's gonna do. There really aren't a lot of bells and whistles on this thing, aside from the Evertune and the fact that I've got a split coil, this is a pretty standard metal style guitar. I chose this thing for aesthetics, but more than that, I chose it for functionality. For me, when I'm choosing a guitar, I would really prefer it not to be too flashy because I would rather my own playing sort of show through rather than everybody just looking at what kind of guitar I'm playing. The next thing in the case is my LTD EC407. Now, I just recently released a video on that. You can check it out up here. I've said it once, I've said it twice, I'll say it a million times. This guitar is a full-blown tank. I've been touring with this thing for four years now, and it still looks relatively brand new. Now, of course, up close, up close and personal, you can see the little defects and all the bumps and bruises that are in it. But really, after touring with it and going all the places in the world that I've gone with this guitar, it's held up like a tank. It's relatively unscathed from all this, which I just think amazes me. But again, just like the E2, the reason I chose this body style and this type of guitar is because it's functional and not aesthetic. I don't need anything that's gonna make the job any more difficult 
while on tour. You know, easy to change the strings, it stays in tune, the setup has been perfect for ages. What more can you ask for in a guitar? Currently, this is my backup guitar, but when I do stuff with, say, my personal project Aphelion, I use this as a alternate tuning guitar. Because it doesn't have the Evertune bridge and I can't actually mess around with some of the tunings, this winds up being the, the guitar that I drop down to drop E. But when I'm with Propane, it's just tuned to standard B, and it's hanging out on the sidelines just waiting to get tagged in. And now we've got that cool little inky soft bag that comes with every single purchase of one of their cases. And this thing I think is really cool. Now, this type of case doesn't really have a compartment like you would have seen in most traditional guitar cases. So I think that it's really, really cool of Inky to include something like this because it serves as a bit of a compartment for gear. But let me show you how I use it. I keep my wireless transmitters in here. I have two Line 6 wireless transmitters. I also keep my guitar straps in here. Now I roll them up nicely and I set the transmitters inside to try to save some space. One thing that I didn't mention in my original review of this case is that I really don't think that it's a good idea to keep your straps on, especially when you're using something like this, like a thick leather style strap. It just won't allow for the guitar to sit in the right place. And also when you set your guitars down inside of this case, they actually fit into two little foam pockets that are fairly snug. So if you do have a strap that has any kind of little metal things on it, you're likely to scratch your guitar if you push it in there with it still connected. So in my opinion, I think it's a really good idea to take the straps off of the guitar before you put them into the case. Something else I keep in the lid of this case is a plastic bag that I hold some pretty standard accessories in that I gotta take on the road. Now when I'm on tour, I really try to travel as simplistic as possible. Luckily, I'm in a band that doesn't really require me to have like a really crazy rig or something that's really overly complicated. So I'm really fortunate in that I'm able to tour with very minimal things. So when I'm out on the road, I can get away with going out there with two cables, because really, I only actually need one of them. One goes from my pedal board to my amp, and that's it, because I use a wireless transmitter. So taking two cables on the road not only guarantees me that if my wireless fails, I have an extra cable to connect, or if one of the cables fails, because generally I only need to use one of them, I have a backup. So it's like a backup of a backup of a backup. The kind of cables I'm rocking here are these monster Pro-Link gold tipped, nice heavy duty cables. Now I've had these cables for probably 15 years. Can you believe that? Can you believe? These two cables, I've been touring with these things between all of my bands for 15 years. Insane. They've lasted forever. At the time when I bought them, Monster Cable had this ridiculous deal that they had a, a lifetime warranty. So if the cable ever broke, you would just bring it back to the music store, hand it over to them, they'd give you a brand new one. Insane. I've gone through a couple of them, but these two have lasted me forever. Maybe I just learned how to treat my cables nicely and now they last for me. But these things were a little bit of a hefty investment at the time, but now seem totally worth it. The next thing that I keep in my case is a spare speaker cable. I also keep a speaker cable in my actual amp case with my amp, but just like anything else on the road, it's good to have a backup, so I keep a backup speaker cable in here with my other cables. The next thing is a complete necessity, and that's a giant bag of custom guitar picks. <laughs> you know, when I'm out on the road, the thing that I'm asked for the most is for a guitar pick. Generally, for every tour, I will go out with at least 100 picks, usually something like 200 picks, and by the end of the tour, I have like four. I go through at least five to 10 picks a show. That's not because I'm dropping them, it's because you throw them out. You know, as you're, you just, you know, you're always tossing them out there. And the last thing that I keep in this little plastic bag of awesomeness are my Tex keychain when we get our tour vans. This is the keychain that he puts the key to the van on. And then also his little headlight. And if any of you guys have seen Propane's Tech Titus on stage with his headlight. He's always pretty funny looking, walking around with this thing. Teets, stop leaving your stuff in the van. All right, 
Lastly, I'd like to talk about some of the things that I don't necessarily keep in this case, but also do take on the road with me. If I'm not actually on tour with propane, I will generally bring a handful of tools with me. And that's gonna be a regular old cord tuner for when I'm doing string changes, and a sweet string winder with some attached clips. These two things are invaluable on the road. It's nice when you can have them be such a small little tiny thing. Multi-function tools, this is always a really important thing. If you can minimize the amount of footprint that you have and the amount of gear that you have to bring down to one thing, like say for instance, a multi-tool like this that has screwdrivers, truss rod wrenches, it's even got a ruler on it so that you can measure you know, string height and things like that. Having these very simple multi-tools I think is super important when you're on the road because you don't want to have a million screwdrivers lying around. You don't want to have a tool for every little thing. You want to have a tool that does every little thing. I think that's pretty important. Check down below. As always, I like to link these things up because I think these things, for 15 bucks, you're gonna have it the rest of your life and you're gonna use it every minute that you're on the road. So that's pretty much what I keep in my case. Pretty simple setup, like I said, functionality over looks or all this other stuff. Aesthetics aren't really all that important. That's why I went for guitars that are very plain, flat black, they're not even shiny. When I'm hitting the stage, I just wanna know that my stuff is as streamlined as possible so that if there is any kind of an issue, I can find it as fast as possible. Does that happen every time? Not really. Sometimes you just don't know where the problems are coming from. But when you travel like this, you're sure to find that issue quickly and get back to the gig as fast as possible. Cool, if you guys enjoyed this video, do me that favor. Like, subscribe if you haven't. Drop me a comment down below. Tell me about what you keep in your guitar case. Do you keep any specific kinds of tools? Do you have any good luck charms? What's going on in there? Is there a smelly sock? Tell me about it down below in the comments. And if you haven't been over to the Madman Music Merch Shop in a while, please head over there and check it out. There's a couple of new items, a lot of good stuff for summertime. Each purchase greatly helps the channel. And also, come over and become a patron. All this support means a lot. So we'll see you in episode two. Until then, stay crazy. Peace! So today's episode is going to be very, very... Adequately? Adequate? No. Uh appropriate. So